Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. Man, you bring up the word HOA and comments explode. Home Owners Association. Comments vary from, well, I like my HOA to you're a bunch of communists. You're just trying to control people's properties, private property, and you should be outlawed. Well, it's a very difficult topic. So let's talk about what a homeowners association is. Why in the world do we even have one? And what can be done about the ones that are out of control? Well, first of all, let's talk about condos. In a condominium, you're going to have to have an HOA because you only own the inside walls of that condo. All of the rest of the property are common areas. The roof, the sidewalks, the clubhouse, the grass, the swimming pool. So collectively, all of you have to manage a budget to keep everything maintained. So homeowners association is going to make sure that everything in that complex is maintained and the outside of the building is painted and that the value maintains over time. Makes sense, right? Well, why do we have homeowners associations in neighborhoods? Well, that kind of evolved. It evolved because there were problems in neighborhoods where people just weren't taking care of their property and neighbors got fed up with it. Homeowners associations didn't just invent themselves. They were requested. For example, I lived in Seattle. I had a really nice little home and, and I prided myself on how I took care of my lawn. I had nice rose bushes, hedges, and really nice looking neighborly houses, except for the guy next door. When you looked out across my lawn, across the rose hedge, here he had this great big cargo truck parked on part of his property that was just bark with weeds. And the truck sat, that was my view from my living room. And I said, why are you parking that truck there? Well, I got a good deal on it, Rick. Um, so, yeah, he wouldn't move it for a year, year and a half, never did move it. My neighbors would even say, how can you put up with that? I go, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? He's parking his truck there, and that's the way. And so I had to put up with that. I didn't like it. Now, I didn't have an HOA, Homeowners Association, so there was nothing anybody else could do about it. But HOAs developed in that environment that said, you know, we're living in this community, and we'd like the community to look like it's well-maintained. And so we want to put together some rules and regulations collectively that we all agree on called the CCNRs. So we put together as a community a list of things we would like to see in our community. So we may only have 30 houses in this community, but we'd like to at least say, you know, we don't want you to have a lot of weeds in your yard. We don't want you to park a dead car in your driveway. We'd prefer it if your motorhome was parked somewhere else instead of right out front. It was acceptable. People liked that. But then something happened over time. HOAs got a little bit greedy. They got a little bit power hungry. Some of the things that we saw were like here. They were exceeding board authority, inconsistent or biased enforcement, and unjustified fines. In other words, some of these HOAs turned into little animals of enforcement. And they got a little out of control. And so the stigma of HOAs went from, oh, this is great. My neighborhood looks good. It's clean. Everything's orderly to, I feel like I'm living somewhere where people are telling me what to do every day and all night. I can't park a car in the street overnight. I can only have a basketball hoop in my backyard if it doesn't exceed the height of the fence. And the rules go on and on and on. So it got ugly out there. And some of it's still there. And there's a lot of lawsuits involved in it. The other thing is HOAs are governed by the homeowners. But a lot of homeowners don't really want to get involved. And some of the people that do want to get involved really shouldn't because they're tyrants. I've seen that. I was president of an HOA board when I owned a condo. And I saw people that really wanted to exert a lot of control. Now, on the other side, 
I saw homeowners in those condos that wanted us to do things that we had no control over. There are things that you can control in an HOA, but some of them are civil matters. In other words, I don't think a barking dog should be regulated by a homeowners association. If it's really loud and it's obnoxious and you've worked with the oh, your next door neighbor and it's not improving, that's between you and your neighbor and your police department, not the HOA. Now, there's some HOAs that try to regulate barking dogs, the size of your dog, you name it. I understand regulating the size of a dog in a condo, but in my backyard, don't tell me I can't have a 50 or 80 pound dog. But some do. So, therefore, HOAs have a very bad reputation. So, what can be done about it? Well, before you buy, you need to get a copy of the CCNRs. What do they allow? What do they don't allow? You can't park in the street at night. Okay. I don't know why that's a regulation, but some have that. Um, you won't, you can, you're only allowed to have two cars parked on your property. Um, you can't have a shed in your backyard that exceeds the height of the fence. Get into the details during the inspection period. Look at those regulations and see if they fit what you want to have. Now, if you don't want an HOA, knock yourself out. There's plenty of neighborhoods that don't have them. Although that's becoming fewer and far between with all the new construction that's going on, they like to put in HOAs, homeowners associations. So you can find a neighborhood where there's no controls and there's no HOA, but then you have to realize you never know what's going to show up next door. You might have two dead cars in the parking lot. You might have weeds that are six feet tall, and there's nothing you can do about it. If you're in an HOA, you need to understand who your management company is, who the people are that are on the board of directors. You vote for them. You need to be actively involved because it's a community association. So get, a, get control of your HOA, get involved, and make sure that they don't let the pendulum swing too far. I saw an example of that in an over 55 community. Now, over 55 communities, I think, are a little bit different because really the community tends to put way more requests and pressure on HOAs than they should. And so they accommodate. But I saw this, this uh, thing going on on one weekend where there was an estate sale. And one of the neighbors took road cones and put them out in, in front of his driveway. And the golf cart guy who's the HOA patrol guy, comes up and says, you got to move those road cones. He goes, well, I have them on the street because people were blocking my driveway to go to that estate sale. He said, well, they can't be in the street. they got to be in the driveway. He goes, well, I put them in the driveway, then they're still going to park in front of my driveway. This went on for about five minutes. He finally relented, moved the road cones up into his driveway. And I'm thinking, you know, the estate sale's done in 30 minutes. It's going to be done at noon. What's your problem? But there was this power struggle going on, which was an example of how some HOAs get carried away. So the bottom line is, make sure you understand what's in the CC&Rs. That may make a big difference as to whether or not you want to buy in that neighborhood. Because some of them are so strict that you may not want to do it. Some of them are no big deal. They just want to make sure your lawn's manicured. They want to make sure you're not building a four-story four home next door and painting it bright pink. Some people like that. If that's the case, don't live in a neighborhood with an HOA. So make sure that you look at the CC&Rs before you buy a property and understand what you're buying into. Have any questions, shoot me an email at rick at rickhelps.com.